Com. This is your work and well-being update. In case you missed it, once again, Judy Martin, work and well-being update. We're here at worklifenation.com. And we're talking about something uh, that a lot of people are talking about right now. It's employee engagement. It's really hot in the East Coast right now. So <laughs> I expect a lot of people are just uh, really hot in their cubicles. But if they have AC, it's a good thing, right? Uh, joining me today to talk about employee engagement is best-selling author Kevin Cruz. Kevin, say hello to everybody. Hey, Judy. Judy, how are you? Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So employee engagement, you know, the latest Gallup poll indicates that U.S. companies are losing between $450 and $550 billion in productivity. Uh, another poll says 70% of employees are either, well, they're either disengaged or they're just miserable at their jobs. But obviously, this is a huge issue. Now, you have a, a lot of experience in this. You have built... Uh, and sold multi-million dollar corporations and your lens the way you look at things is through wholehearted leadership for employee engagement your latest book is employee engagement for everyone it's a nice quick read and uh, I learned a lot from that so let's just go right to the news source here we have an issue coming out of what I call that career chaos recession of 2008 now companies are maybe starting we, we saw there might be a little bit of a raise coming next year maybe they want to hang on to their employees employees a little bit more than they used to. Uh, what are the implications that you see here for employee engagement and productivity? Well, Judy, you, you summed it up um, really accurately. I mean, it, it's and it's not just since the Great Recession. For about 25 mm -hmm. years, employee engagement has just been getting lower and lower and lower. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's mm -hmm. a worldwide crisis. It isn't even just in, in uh, the United States. It's around the world. And as you point out, for every one person that might be engaged at work, there's at least one that's actively disengaged, that really doesn't want to be there, that wants to find a new job. And then the other third is just you know, sort of drifting somewhere in between and you know employee engagement is uh, it's really our emotional commitment to our organization and their goals so you know for if a salesperson is is committed to their organization if a salesperson is engaged they're gonna sell just as hard on Friday as they would on a Monday uh, a service person who's engaged is gonna give uh, great customer service throughout the entire day not just in the in the morning when they're fresh uh, people who are on assembly lines they're gonna have higher levels of productivity and quality and fewer mistakes so that's what drives this this massive Gallup number that everybody talks about it's true it's it's you know people who are disengaged are causing fewer sales, poorer service, more mistakes, more defects, and and uh, turnovers higher. You know, as they they move from job to job to job. So it's really a global crisis that's affecting uh, businesses and and also individuals uh, alike. You know, it, a lot of the conversation has been around employee engagement as being this number, this metric that is difficult to really measure. When we start seeing statistics come out of Gallup saying that companies are losing money, do you really think that corporate America is starting to listen to this and be more concerned about it? We do see more employee engagement programs, more companies worry about happiness, at least the progressive companies, uh, stress, things of that nature. But is it enough of a metric to to wake companies up to be more concerned about this and not just some kind of like woo-woo thing out in, yeah. in outer space. Well, I, I wish it was enough and it's a good start, but it's, it's not going to be um, uh, the answer in itself. More and more companies are waking up to this idea of the power of engagement, and they know now that they should be measuring the engagement levels through surveys, you know, of, mm -hmm. the, of their workers. But I think too many companies, um, they, make, they make mistakes of either let's just let's just measure it once every couple of years and talk about it in the c-suite talk about it at HR and they don't really share that data down or they'll drive initiatives um, that they think are effective uh, like uh, picnics and parties mm -hmm. you know let's let's add a band-aid approach picnic. right band-aid approach the band -aid that approach. makes everybody yep yeah, that makes everybody happy while they're at the party it doesn't make them any more <laughs> engaged when they're back in their cube so uh, you know the the point of of, of really the, the book and my work is to say the new efforts around employee engagement it really has to be a grassroots approach. Um, we definitely need leadership support. We definitely want to measure it, but we need to share 
the results of those measurements with every single manager and have those mm -hmm. team members come up with their own ideas for, hey, here's what we need to improve employee engagement on our team. So rather than that top-down approach and that, you know, let's tweak benefits and add an extra uh, party or go to casual Fridays, let mm -hmm. the answers come up from the grassroots efforts to, to really go the other direction. And in your book, you really talk about uh, the strategy for doing that as perhaps identifying people's engagement styles and even your own personal personal engagement style as a manager. So um, I think that you know we look at people's IQ, EQ. That's been right. really hot. But as far as engagement styles, how does one do that? How does a company implement something like that? And also, I'm assuming that you're suggesting it's not just a one-time deal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, you know, we know from uh, the world's largest body of of employee surveys, 10 million workers in 150 countries. Mm. We know there are four keys to engagement: how we feel about work. So it's communication growth, are we learning, learning new things, it's recognition, do we feel appreciated, and trust, do I trust that leadership has us on the right path. But while that's the top drivers for everybody, mm -hmm. we're all individuals. So, you know, Kevin might be really interested in growth opportunities, I'm early in my career at a new company and that's what I'm most focused on, but uh, someone else, you know, maybe Judy's more interested in feeling appreciated, she wants more recognition. So the idea is to um, uh, first have a conversation about what the real drivers of engagement are. It isn't parties, it isn't casual Fridays, it's communication, growth, recognition, and trust. But then let's understand which of those are most important to us as, as individuals. And it's something we can reflect on. Uh, I share on, on, on the website and the books questions that help us get at it. And, and anybody can go to a free online assessment. It's called myengagementprofile.com. You answer some questions and it gives you your own profile. And that's going to tell me um, uh, as an individual what's my top priority, what's going to motivate me at work, and then knowing what that is, I need to be careful to make sure I don't manage through that. If communication is my number one, I'm probably really good at communicating with everybody, but I need to remember that your top driver might be uh, uh, growth, and I need to focus on that, so I need to personalize and tailor my management style for you. In your book, uh, this is not only written for managers and CEOs, it's written, as you said, for individuals. So uh, that begs the question then, whose responsibility is it to be engaged? Is it, is it the employee who's looking for those personal development and those growth opportunities, or is it up to management because they're so concerned they're going to lose those employees? I mean, where, where does that fall? What's more important? You're, you've been a CEO. Yeah, Judy, and it's this has been a journey for me because um, the the prior books I did on this really focused on what managers could do to develop their leadership skills for engagement. And engagement, it's a feeling that comes from our relationship, you know, with our with our boss. So that makes sense. But I was doing a workshop uh, one day, and someone sort of just raised their hand, didn't wait for me to call on them, and said, "Why is it always the manager's fault? <laughs> you know, how come the person that complains about communication is often the person that never raises their hand to ask a question in a meeting?" <laughs> So that got me thinking about that, and there was some research that shows that about 43% of engagement comes from our own intrinsic motivation. And as I looked at that deeper and started studying the positive psychology movement, I realized that each of us uh, could really do more to be engaged at work, and, and really we all have an obligation to, to create that great place to work for our peers as well. You don't need a title to be a leader. You don't need direct reports to, to help create a great place to work. And, you know, so one of the, the big things I discovered, and, and Judy, this is a lot of your work around mindfulness, is we can all um, increase our levels of engagement at work and our happiness at work just by being more mindful about it. How are we feeling? What are we doing to drive our own engagement? What are we doing to drive the engagement of those around us? And to be um, mindful of all the things that the company is already doing to help us grow, to uh, communicate with us, uh, 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 to show us recognition. You know, it's it's sort of trite, but I talk about, you know, going to work with an attitude of gratitude. You know, it starts with being mindful for what we already have, grateful for that what we that which we already have, and then let's think about what we can do to partner with our boss and to partner with our peers to, you know, make a great place to work together. There's another uh, element here which really should be discussed, and that's the fact that 
at this point, a lot of people are probably looking elsewhere if they're really miserable in their jobs. Right. So doesn't it make sense for them to really be a little bit more self-contemplative and say, hey, you know, how can I improve myself where I'm at before moving on to the next step. I wrote an article last year called The Emerging Human Capital Zeitgeist and it really mm. talked about the fact that um, as the economy improves people are going to be looking elsewhere but you know, at the same time those people who need to go elsewhere doesn't it benefit them to, to do the best they can where they're at so that they can move in, in even if they move into another company with a better mindset. I, I think that's great. You know, maximize what you have uh, and where you are uh, today. That makes sense. It, you, you will feel better for it. You will learn more from it. You'll leave that company, when you do leave that company, with better friends and referrals and recommendations. Uh, there's, there's no upside to focusing on the positive or, 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 you know, thinking that the current situation is hopeless. So it is valid to say, hey, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I've made the wrong career choice and, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in an industry I shouldn't be in or I'm in the right industry but in the wrong company. Um, that happens. We all need to take our time to find what we really want to be doing. But while we're figuring that out, while we're opening up that new door, let's maximize where we are. I think that, that makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense. Yeah, because people are kind of walk it around, and uh, even if they're unhappy in their jobs, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help them. And and I get it. I understand that. I've been in positions in corporate America and working in news where it's been, uh, it's been difficult. But uh, yeah. sometimes it's hard to get to that place. Uh, once again, just for everyone out there, the book is Employee Engagement for Everyone, and so that's not just the middle manager, <laughs> not just the CEO. That means you as well. Um, and your website, KevinCruz.com. Like to talk about uh, something in the book. You. you talk about growth recognition and trust as drivers for high performing teams. Right. Give us a, a picture of what that high performing team looks like because you've been so successful at it. Well, I, I, again, it, it, the success comes from team efforts. I was, uh, th there's been different business awards and, and, you know, it was an Inc. 500 fast growing company, but the, yeah. the one award that meant something to me was getting a best place to work award because that came from mm -hmm. you know questions surveys to the the workers themselves and you know I think what that looks like with communication we need to change our perspective on that and realize it's two-way communication mm -hmm. uh, too often managers or CEOs will say how can they complain about communication you know I do a monthly newsletter we have a website we've got our annual report mm -hmm. well that's all pushing it down what people want to know is that their voice is heard that they have a uh, uh, their ideas are, are being mm -hmm. considered doesn't mean they're all being adopted but at least being considered so when it comes to communication it's teams where there's a, a, a ritual and a culture of asking questions and listening as much as it is as as, as one way and recognition it's um, sometimes the most uh, powerful stuff is free and easy. Um, people don't want awards and rewards. You know, the, whoever wins the president club, that's one winner and 99 losers. Uh, you know, people want daily thank yous, <laughs> daily forms of appreciation. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the types of things that will really make uh, the teams come together and be able to move uh, quickly as one team. Yeah, that trust and communication. You have a great quote in your book by Ralph Marston. Make it a habit to tell people thank you, to express your appreciation sincerely and without the expectation of anything in return. We're so afraid to give because we don't think we're going to get back enough. Yeah, that, the, the data on how little adults say thank you during the, the work day is really incredible. And, yeah. and nobody ever thanks their boss. I mean, that's almost unheard of. Um, but, but, you know, giving, giving thanks is almost like a mirror. You know, the more you thank mm -hmm. other people in a sincere way when it's appropriate, the more likely they're going to notice when you're doing great work and mm -hmm. show appreciation as well. Yeah, it's that community effort. Thanks so much for speaking uh, with me here today. Kevin Cruz at KevinCruz.com. The book is, show everybody here, Employee Engagement for Everyone. You can reach Kevin at uh, KevinCruz.com. Kevin, once again, thanks for, for being with us today. Any final note that you'd like to, or, or, or you know, pearl of wisdom you'd like to leave the audience with today? I, Judy, first, thanks for having me. It's great to just get the message out. I think it just comes down to, 
really understanding that um, life is too short to be unhappy at work. So mm -hmm. um, be mindful of your own engagement at work. Understand that it impacts not just the company, but your own stress, your own life levels. And um, be mindful of this and be proactive. Work with your boss, work with your peers to help create a better place to work. All right. Thanks very much. Once again, Kevin Cruz here, KevinCruz.com. You have been watching the Work and Wellbeing Update here at WorkLifeNation.com. I'm Judy Martin. We will see you next week.